we sit with Hawkins Joyful Bees. And for those watching our Hawkins Family uh, YouTube channel, we just started that. You can also find that here on Face or on YouTube. It's, it's not all about bees. It's really just about our family. But you'll see this video on there as well. But today we got a phone call to come get a swarm of bees. So we're on our way there. Uh, we do enjoy getting the swarms. The swarms in the swarm traps are my favorite thing to do about beekeeping. Um, you're not going to see me get the bees. Um, I don't really deal with that part of it. Then I'm going to let Shane tell you really what a swarm is, why the bees swarm, and what we do with them when we go get them. So I'm going to turn the camera over on him while he's driving. <laughs> I know, right? And let him kind of explain to you today what we're doing. Hey guys, how's it going? So, we're on our way to go get a swarm of bees. Um, when a colony of bees gets so large and they outgrow their area that they're in, like in a hollow of a tree, they will begin to reproduce. Um, well, they're always doing reproduction. The queen lays around a thousand eggs every day. That's a lot of eggs. But when they get ready to spread out to for survival, and they get too large for where they're at, the queen will lay an egg into what is called a queen cup. It's a special little uh, cell that the bees build, and uh, the queen will lay an egg in there and then the bees will cover that egg up with more beeswax and it'll form like a, it'll look like a peanut and that's a queen cell. Well, whenever the queen cell hatches, they will, uh, right before the queen, the new queen hatches, the old queen will take about half the colony of bees that's there and she will fly away and find a new home. They call that swarming. So it'll, it's real, a swarm is really loud. You can hear the bees. Uh, the volume of the bees is pretty loud. You can hear it really well. Um, it looks like a little cloud up in the sky almost because they're so thick a lot of times, especially a larger hive. Um, and then the virgin queen that just hatched, she'll stay there with the rest of the colony and within a week or so, she'll go off on a, what's called a mating flight. She'll get mated with about 15 or 16 other male bees called drones. And she'll come back and she'll then be the new queen of that hive and she'll start laying eggs. And then the whole process goes year after year every spring. So eventually the next year, uh, that new queen, she'll become the old queen, and then she'll leave with half the colony of bees, and then a new queen will be born. And that's how they spread themselves out and keep going with the population of bees. So, anyways, so we got a swarm, so it should be the old queen, and uh, with half the colony, and every, every colony is different sizes. We don't know if this is a large swarm, small or medium but it's on a fence post at this guy's uh, place on a, I think he says wrapped around about halfway around the fence post so we're gonna go out there I've got a box it's called a nook box NUC for nook or nucleus I'm going to take the bees and I'm going to I got a brush and I'm gonna brush them down into that box I won't get all of the bees, but I'll get the majority of them. And as long as I've got the queen with me, then we should be good. So uh, we'll be seeing that pretty soon. So we'll get back on the camera when we get to the guy's house. Right, so I'm gonna push pause, um, and then we will uh, get back on here in just a moment so you all can watch us get them. We'll be back. I just gotta look around for the queen right now. Okay. Sometimes she'll come out on the surface. The Walshman thing, so I, I, I didn't want to get that close. <laughs> I don't blame you.
when he drops them into the box, you may see a bunch of them start going <laughs> everywhere. It's really quite amazing. It is. So do you have a lot of bees then? We're up to about 40 hives. Really? Yeah. Okay. So we love it. Swarms is probably my favorite. Uh -huh. Do you sell the honey local? We do. Local? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We uh, we have some on Briar Patch on 56, and some at the Apothecary. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then we set up uh, with some vendor events. We'll set up oh, and, okay. and sell there too. Honeybees are just amazing. This is a lot easier than getting them from a tree. <laughs> <laughs> a lot easier. got the bees in the box um, it was fairly easy they were wrapped around that post as you guys saw the hard part was that barbed wire fence just getting that box up against it was kind of uh, awkward uh, little situation but it wasn't that bad especially once I put the frames in those frames that I placed in uh, two of them was full of honey so it made it heavy and then when you add the weight of the beast to it, it was kind of hard to hold the box up and scrape at the same time. Um, but anyways, I did see the queen. Uh, we got the queen down in there. I've seen her several times actually. I tried to get her with my queen catcher. It's a little clip that I have. But every time I would try to get to it and get her, she would go down in under the rest of the bees and they would hide her and I couldn't, then I couldn't see her. So, but I do know she's in there. So now there's going to be a few stragglers left behind because I couldn't get every one of them. Um, I did set the box up on the on the line and I opened up the door and a lot of the bees just started walking in. So that helped out a lot. A lot of times they will spray a pheromone or they'll they'll let out a pheromone, which kind of says, "Hey, everybody, the queen's in here." So when they do that, they'll they'll lift their rear ends up in the air they'll emit that pheromone and then they'll they'll fan their wings to spread that pheromone out and that lets the other bees know that the queen's inside there and so that's what they were doing we call it fanning and once they're fanning they will emit that pheromone into the air and the rest of the bees will come in there and that's what i did and they just marched right in there but as i said uh i won't be able to get every single one of them but we did get the majority so uh, we got them in there. We're going to take them home. I'm going to give them a few minutes to actually probably like an hour to settle down. And uh, then I'm going to get it back in there. I'm going to look in there and see what they're doing and see how they're looking. Um, we'll probably feed them some sugar water because they are going to be in a new place. So they don't know where the food sources are. So I'll feed them some sugar water and get them, get their bellies filled. And uh, yeah, well they, everything went great. I'd like to thank Chris and I'd like to thank Kevin for referring me. Um, we hope to get some more and grow the bees and get some pollinators out in this area. And uh, we're all about the bee and the pollinators because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have any food. I read an article that states that a third of our food comes from pollination. 
and I know that the almond farmers over in California they heavily depend upon uh, bees honeybees and other insects to pollinate their crops it's like a over a billion dollar industry with all the pollination so again we we enjoy it we love what we're doing and uh we're glad we could bring you guys along with us it has been nice it's great working yeah. with farmers so when a farmer and a beekeeper working together we're saving the world that's right that is awesome so thank a farmer without farmers we wouldn't have food um and thank you chris for helping us save the bees today i do hope your grandchildren enjoy this video so we do appreciate all the farmers thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to come get the bees you all have a great day god bless and we'll see you again soon